Hello Year 5. One of my most favourite things to do at school is looking at famous paintings with you and watching you discover lots of lovely things that you can see. So I thought we could look at some together. So I'm going to show you some famous paintings and I'm wondering whether you'll be able to recognise them from just a small piece. So will you be able to identify the famous painting from the clue you are given? Will you be able to name the artist? Will you learn some new art vocabulary? And finally, your task is going to be to describe one of the pictures, perhaps your favourite, just like we do in Art Starters in Literacy. So let's begin. I wonder if you can guess who the artist is of this painting. I think we have looked at one by them before. There is so much to see in this painting and so much to describe. It's very strange, isn't it? This is called Guernica by Pablo Picasso. Picasso was very famous for doing very abstract paintings where bits didn't appear to fit in the right place. Picasso was a Spanish artist who lived between 1881 and 1973. Guernica is one of his best known abstract works which he painted in 1937. The painting is 3.49 metres tall and 7.76 metres wide. Your school desks are about a metre long, so that means this painting is about three and a half desks tall and nearly eight desks wide. That's very big. It was painted in grey and black oils. It is now exhibited in the Museo Reina Sofia in Madrid, Spain. The painting shows the tragedies of war and the suffering inflicted on individuals during wartime. Guernica is a town in the Basque region of Spain, which was bombed by the Germans during the Spanish Civil War. The painting is regarded by critics as one of the most powerful anti-war paintings in history. Picasso was so horrified by the bombings and destruction, he was inspired to paint. So just look at Guernica by Pablo Picasso again. What can you see? Perhaps you'd like to make some notes. Perhaps this will be the picture that you will describe. Who's this beautiful lady? Have you seen a picture like this before? I wonder. Wow, this is a beautiful painting, which I was very lucky to actually have seen the real thing when I visited Florence on a school trip. This is called Spring Painting by Sando Botticelli. Botticelli was an Italian Renaissance painter. This painting is also known as Primavera, which means spring, and is said to depict a group of mythological figures in a garden, which is just blooming with the lush newness of springtime. It was painted around the end of the 15th century and is described as one of the most popular paintings in Western art. It is displayed in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy, which is where I saw it. It is the most beautiful thing. My favourite part is the cherub at the top firing his arrow. What can you see? Oh. 
I'm sure you all know who this is. Yes, it's the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. So da Vinci was an Italian artist. The Mona Lisa was painted around the early 1500s and probably finished by about 1517. It is thought to be a painting of a young lady called Lisa Gherardini. It was acquired by King Francis I of France and is now the property of the French Republic and on display in the Louvre, Paris. This is thought to be one of the most valuable paintings in the world. For insurance purposes, it was valued in 2018 at $650 million. It has to be one of the most written about, most sung about and most copied image in the world. In 1911, an Italian worker at the Louvre actually stole the painting. He believed that the painting should be returned to the birthplace of da Vinci in Italy. He didn't realise that it was actually da Vinci himself who bought it to France. The museum did not realise it was gone for a whole day, as it was not hung on its own, but on a wall full of other paintings. The thief tried to sell the painting, two years later, to the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. But they called the police and the thief was arrested and jailed, whilst the painting was returned to the Louvre, where it is now the most visited painting in the gallery. People queue for hours to see this painting at the Louvre. Many just stand and stare and ask, is she smiling? Is she not? I haven't been lucky enough to see this one myself, but my mum has. And she says it's not just people just staring at the Mona Lisa, but at the wonderful landscape in the background, which many people miss. I wonder if you could describe that background. Who's this little lady? This is called The Maids of Honour by Diego Velasquez. Velasquez was one of the leading artists of the Spanish Golden Age. This was painted in 1656 and is now displayed in the Museo del Prado in Madrid. It depicts the main chamber of the court of King Philip IV of Spain. The man at the easel painting is actually Velasquez himself. And in the mirror on the back wall, you can actually see the top half of the king and queen themselves looking at their daughter, who is surrounded by her maids and servants. Can you spot the king and queen? I wonder who that man is going up the stairs through the back door. The dog looks very comfortable, doesn't he? Who's this lady with the beautiful eyes? Have you seen this painting before? This is called Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer. Vermeer was a Dutch painter. He painted this in 1665 and since 1902 it has been housed at The Hague. In 2006 the Dutch people selected this painting as the most beautiful painting in the Netherlands. It is 44 and a half centimetres high and 39 centimetres wide. So it's about as big as half of one of your desks. 
It depicts a European girl wearing an exotic dress and an oriental turban with a very large pearl earring. In 2014, the Dutch physicist Vincent Eyck raised doubts that the earring was actually a pearl and said it was probably polished tin as the reflection was too great. The shape was wrong and it was far too large to be a pearl. There was actually a film made called The Girl with the Pearl Earring based on this picture. What amazes me is how much like a photograph this looks and I have to remind myself that it is actually a painting. I wonder if you know who this lady is. This is called Marilyn by Andy Warhol. It's also called the Marilyn Diptych by Andy Warhol. This is a silk screen painting on canvas, which depicts 50 of the same images of the film star Marilyn Monroe. It was painted in 1962, unfortunately after Monroe had died. Warhol is known as the most famous American pop artist. The painting can now be seen at the Tate Gallery in London. So this is 50 of the same images. However, if you look closely at all the images, there is a slight variation on each one. Some are darker than others. And you'll notice that the pictures on the right hand side of your screen are actually in black and white. Some believe that this is to portray Marilyn in her lifetime when she was bright and colourful and Marilyn when she died. This is one of my favourite paintings. Have you seen this before? This is called The Persistence of Memory by a painter called Salvador Dali. He was very eccentric. This was painted in 1931 by the Spanish surrealist painter Salvador Dali. Since 1934, it has been housed at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The soft, melting watches are said to depict the relativity of space and time and that we can't hold on to either. Some believe he was influenced by Einstein's theory of relativity, but Dali rebuked this and said he was actually influenced by camembert cheese melting in the sun. Dali liked to include symbolism in his work. Can you see the ants on the orange clock? These depicted decay. What other symbols do you think you can see? Dali was known for using sunlight as his light source. So you can see the cliffs on the right hand side are lit up. Whereas the figure which is strange and I don't really know what it is, seems to be in the shade. Also, what are the strange steps? What's going on here? This painting is called Golconda by René Magritte. René Magritte was a Belgian surrealist painter. He painted this in 1953. It depicts reigning men, nearly all identical, dressed in dark overcoats and bowler hats. The background, the houses with the red roofs, is very similar to the environment Magritte lived in 
and he dressed in a similar fashion. The bowler hat was a common feature in his work. The question is, are the men raining down or are they floating upwards like helium balloons? What do you think? One of the most fascinating things about this painting is if you look closely at the men's faces, they are all different. Have you seen this painting before? This is called A Sunday on the Grand Jot by Georges Surat. It's very colourful. Surat was a French painter. He was part of the Impressionist movement in Paris. This was painted between 1884 and 1886. Le Grand Jotte is a park in Paris and he sat in the park and painted the Parisians enjoying a sunny day on the banks of the River Seine. This painting is seen as a leading example of pointillism. It is two metres high and three metres wide. So that's two desks high and three desks wide. Again, a very large painting. It is currently displayed at the Art Institute in Chicago. Every time I look at this painting, I see something different. Can you spot the monkey at the bottom of the lady's skirt? There is so much to describe in this painting. <laughs> I'm sure you all know what this one is. Yes, it's the sunflowers by Vincent van Gogh. So Van Gogh painted a series of 14 sunflower paintings around 1888. All of them different colours, but of course the sunflowers were always yellow. He painted this particular one as a decoration for the guest bedroom of his then friend Paul Gauguin, another painter, at his house in Arles, France. Unfortunately, the friends fell out and one almighty row led to Van Gogh cutting off his earlobe in despair. This painting is 95 centimetres high and 73 centimetres wide. It was bought from Van Gogh's sister-in-law in 1923 for £1,304 by the National Gallery in London, where it was displayed until this year. For the first time, the sunflowers have left Europe and are now in Tokyo, Japan. It is regarded as another of the most valuable paintings in the world. Can you find out how much it is worth? The reason that this particular painting of the sunflowers out of all 14 was seen as the most famous is because basically Van Gogh was painting yellow upon yellow. He just used lots of different hues of yellow. Can you count how many sunflowers there are? Who's this stern looking man? And his equally stern looking daughter. This is called American Gothic by Grant Wood. This was painted in 1930 by the American painter Grant Wood and is now housed in the Art Institute of Chicago. Wood was inspired to paint a house in Eldon, Iowa, USA, which was built in a Gothic architectural style and included, as he put it, the kind of people he fancied should live in that house, so the people he thought would be suited to that house. The painting depicts a farmer and his daughter, although some people think it's man and wife. Wood used his sister as a model for the daughter and his dentist 
for the farmer. The painting is 78 centimetres high and 65 centimetres wide. How would you describe the look on their faces? What's he carrying in his hand? What do you think they're thinking? Is this familiar? Yes, it's the scream by Edvard Munch. So Edvard Munch was a Norwegian expressionist artist who painted this picture in 1893. The agonised face has become one of the most iconic images in art, seen as symbolising the anxiety of the human condition. Monk created two versions in paint and two in pastels. Both of the painted versions have been stolen over the years but since recovered. Monk recalled that he had been out for a walk along a fjord in Oslo when suddenly the setting sun turned red and he heard the scream of nature. What do you think he meant? What do you think the swirling patterns mean? And look at the colours that have been used. I wonder what this is. This is called The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. Klimt was an Austrian symbolist painter he painted this around 1907. It depicts a couple embracing, dressed in elaborate robes which were influenced by Art Nouveau. The painting is 180 centimetres high by 180 centimetres wide, so it's a square painting, and it's housed in the Belvedere Museum in Vienna. Klimt's use of gold and style was influenced by the Byzantine mosaics he saw on a trip to Italy in 1903. I think this is very beautiful and the picture doesn't do it justice. It is very shiny and if you look at one of the doors on the bottom corridor at school you will see another Klimt painting. Next time you're in school, see if you can spot it. Have you seen this before? This is very strange, isn't it? This is called Relativity by Moritz Etcher. This is a lithograph print created by the Dutch artist in 1953. It depicts a world in which normal laws of gravity do not apply. The structure has seven stairways, each with different gravity sources. The architectural structure seems to be in the middle of an idyllic community. Everybody going about their daily business with windows and doorways leading to parks. All the figures are dressed in identical attire and they all have featureless bulb shaped heads. I could look at this picture for hours and still not understand what's going on. Look at the people going up and down the stairs. How is that possible? How is it possible that that man is sat on that bench without falling down the wall? It's a very clever piece of work. So, your first task to complete and send to your teacher. During this lesson, there have been a number of words related to the art world, which I would like you to find out the meaning of. Research the meaning and write a short description of what the word describes. Abstract, Renaissance, Diptych, Surrealism, Impressionism, Pointillism, Expressionism, Symbolism and Lithograph. The 
the second task to complete and send to your teacher. I would like you to choose one of the incredible paintings that we have been looking at and write a description of it. Imagine that you are describing it to someone who has never seen the picture. Think about all the descriptive vocabulary you could use. You might want to use a thesaurus, just like we do in our art starters. Remember to include descriptions for all the senses. Imagine that you are actually in the picture or that the picture comes to life. What can you see? What can you smell? What can you hear? What can you taste? What can you feel? The best descriptive paragraph will be awarded Star Paragraph and published on DB Primary. And I'm really looking forward to reading them.